Picture this. You get to the end of the day and you wonder just where all the hours went. Sure, you got everyone up, you got them dressed, you got the kids to school, you went to work, you paid the bills, you got the groceries, you made dinner, you washed the laundry, but sometimes it feels like you're just along for the ride of life rather than living a meaningful life. Today we are flipping the script and talking about the fact that number one, you have a story to share. Number two, your story matters. And number three, how to share your story. If you are ready to trade that mundane for a meaningful life without ever changing your circumstances, then keep listening. You, my friend, were made for more. More than the managing of schedules, keeping up with kiddos, and holding down the home front. Welcome to the Mill Spouse Mastermind Show, the podcast that empowers you to get unstuck and craft a life with more meaning and less overwhelm. I'm your host, Christine, seasoned military spouse, mom of three, and your guide to designing a life you love and growing a purpose-fueled business as a military spouse. I believe you have something valuable to offer. And when you pursue the things that light your heart on fire, you trade frustration for fulfillment and isolation for a life of impact. It's time to discover who you are meant to be because together we can change the world. I am so glad you're here. This is the place for authentic conversations about how we get unstuck and live with purpose as military spouses. There can be a lot of obstacles in this journey and this podcast exists to talk about these challenges and what we can do about them. My goal each week is to motivate, to encourage, and to empower you to make the most of the life you have. Now, one thing to know about me is that I love to read. I love to learn. I am always seeking out new resources to share with our community. Usually, I am reading about six books at any given time. And one of the books that I am currently working my way through is The Way of Integrity, by Martha Beck and I was reading out of this book last night and I really focused on this one quote and I really wanted to share it with you. She is talking about how we often have a guide or some kind of teacher to help us when we feel stuck, when we are in this place of feeling like We're spinning our wheels. We've tried to make things better and have been unsuccessful. And we are, when we are in this place, she says, at this point, our odds of finding the way back to wholeness by ourselves are vanishingly small. But someone with a different perspective can spot what we're missing and help set us right. And this is exactly why I started offering these Get Unstuck sessions on the podcast because all of us get stuck at times in different ways for different reasons. But what we really need is someone with a different perspective, someone who's not in it the way that we are, that can help us find our way back to wholeness and to ourselves. So if there is something that you feel is holding you back as a military spouse, that is making you feel lost or stuck or unfulfilled or unsure of what your next step needs to be, then just click the link in the show notes and book a free unstuck session with me. It costs you absolutely nothing and it might be exactly what you need to help you find your way back to yourself and to stepping into the full version of who you were meant to be. Now, today's episode is really about understanding that your life is a story, that you have a story to share and that your story matters. 
My guest today is Stephen Leapley, who is an executive ghostwriter who specializes in helping entrepreneurs and military personnel share their stories. Stephen's background includes time spent as a corpsman in the Navy, a professional musician, a full-time RV living minimalist, and now an aspiring farmer. His life philosophy is best summed up in his motto, when you love your life, you leave a legacy, which I think is very fitting as a military spouse. And today we're going to look at the question of how can we leave a legacy? So Stephen, welcome to the show. Would you just take a few minutes and tell us a little bit about yourself? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, my name is Stephen Leapley and I am a ghost writer. I've been ghost writing for probably about seven years officially, been writing forever. Um, I spent 10 years in the, in the Navy as a corpsman. Uh, my wife and I, we have seven kids. We've been married 25 years. On top of being a ghostwriter, we have a little family farm. And so, and we've lived, we've lived in an RV for the last almost six years uh, full time. And um, as, a, as kind of as a minimalistic family out of choice. And, um, and so that's a, that was, that's a fun story. But um so that's that's kind of who who I am. I'm I'm on my fifth career as a ghostwriter. I went from the from the military into gover you know government into training, and then um, went back to school and got a couple of degrees. Thought I was going to become a, a counselor, and then I ended up as a ghostwriter, which is kind of like counseling <laughs> to me. <laughs> so so talk to me just for a minute. Number one about what it's like to live in an RV because I mean I think it could be fun for a little while but I would think after a while I'm like I I, I need a little more space <laughs> that hasn't happened yet um no well no not really <laughs> it's th there there's a little bit of that just because you know we we have we have a 36 foot travel trailer so it's and we, and I've got four slide outs so I have I do have space and we have a bunkhouse for the kids and of our kids, three of them are adults and moved out. So that is, so we only have, we only have four with us right now, but, um, it's, it's been fun. We, we had the big house at one point and all of the kids ended up in one bedroom and that, like they each had their own bedroom and they all ended up in one bedroom together forever. It was like, I'm just wasting money. And so when the opportunity came for us to, to jump into an RV, it was like, the kids were like, Oh, this is awesome. And we spend a lot of time outside anyway. So it's, it's not like the inside of the house is, is where we spend most of the time that that tends to help, help, you know, extend the process out. So yeah, if you were somewhere cold, it might be a little more difficult. That's yeah, that's the other thing. I'm in Southern California. So it's, it's a, uh, it's nice. <laughs> awesome. So You've done a lot of different things. What was it that really led you to ghostwriting? I, I started off as a copywriter and like doing some editing and copywriting. And, and as we were getting ready to embark, we, were, we did a cross country trip when we, right after we bought the RV in, in 2017, 18. And um, right before then, I, was, I met an old friend from high school who's a business guy out here in in Southern California, we were at an event and got reconnected and he was asking me what I was doing and said, you know, Hey, we, we just jumped into an RV. We're going to do a cross country trip and, and I'm kind of doing editing and, and hope, hoping that it'll work out <laughs> kind of. And he was like, well, I need a copywriter. How are your copywriting skills? So I was like, they're pretty, pretty decent. And I'd done writing for years and he's like, well, how about I just hire you as, as you know, one of my copywriters and, and help fund your trip. And so that's kind of how I got started into, into copywriting, specifically into ghostwriting. When, when my wife and I were in, in grad school, she came to me and, and, uh, I, some people, I love telling the story. She hates it when I tell the story, but you know, that's, that's it's, 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 uh, uh, cause I tell it from my perspective. <laughs> so, right. Right. Uh, that's how it always goes. Right. It, it, so, so she came to me and she had a, paper and I, I always did editing for her papers and helped her out just because I because she she speak she types right like she speaks so it's very conversational but which is amazing uh, but it's not academically 
you know, sound, so to speak. And so I would come in and kind of make it all look academic. And so she came to me one time with a paper and, and I asked her how many, four pages. She's like, I'm done writing. Can you just edit for me? And I'm like, sure. And I said, how long is the paper supposed to be? And she said, 10 pages. And I said, you can't. And I knew what class she was in. And I was like, you can't put in like less than 10 pages. It has, it needs to be like perfectly packaged on this for this one. She's like, well, I'm, I'm done. I'm like, you can't do that. She goes, well, then you write it. And so I did. And so that was kind of like, and I couldn't write it in my tone because it, it could, you could completely see, you know, we think, we think differently. And so that was where I really cut my teeth on. I took it as a challenge. I'm like challenge accepted. I'm going to write this. And so I did, I wrote another six pages and I wrote it in her tone and with her personality. And I was like, I impressed myself. I was like, wow, this is really kind of cool. And so over the years with copywriting, I've had some clients ask if they could help with books and, and that turned into to writing. And then in the last year and a half, I really kind of shifted into solely doing ghostwriting with books and primarily books and blogs for, for people. And then in the last six months, almost completely shifting into veterans and military and that came back into that community. Um, I spent 10 years, like I said, I spent 10 years as a corpsman. So I'm familiar with it and it, and it just, it's, you know, it's, I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, it's time to kind of give back to that community. And so where did this idea of I want to help other people tell their stories and it is important for people to be able to tell their stories? Where, where did that idea evolve from? I think telling my own story, just kind of being in the entrepreneurial world and, and you know, there's, there's a huge thing inside, the, inside that concept, the coaching, consulting, speaking business of like your mess is your message or your test is your testimony kind of thing. And, and, and so really some of the best marketing, easiest marketing tactics is to kind of share your story and weave that into whatever, you know, business coaching that you're doing. And so that, that's kind of a, being in that field was kind of like, oh, this is kind of cool. And I can see where, where the overlap goes. And then a buddy of mine, I was helping him write his book. And the thing that got me with it was he said, writing this book has been more cathartic and more helpful in me dealing with my post-traumatic stress than, than any therapy session I've ever gone through. Mm -hmm. And it really hit me. I, I think most of us know that like when we journal, you know, it's always better to journal out than, than to just to talk it out. But in writing the book, there's you're not sitting across from somebody going, you know, how does this make you feel? You're like, do you, do you remember what you were going through? It's like you're telling the story on your own terms versus somebody else's terms. Like we're, we're counseling and therapy is kind of under the therapist's terms where writing is under your own terms. And so that really kind of struck a, a chord with me of like, yeah, like this is amazing. And so in talking with other people inside, you know, the, the vet community, it it really just was like, everybody's like, yes, yes, yes. This is, you know, sharing our stories in, in that journaling format, in that written format is so, there's so much healing there. And people do it for different reasons. I've got people who, who write books for their business, you know, to help them with their business. And I've got a guy right now writing his book, like his sole purpose is to give it to his grandkids so they know his story, his military story. And it was like, he's like, I don't want to sell it. I just want to make 10 copies, give it to my grandkids. I'm like, sweet. And so that that's kind of that was kind of the, the drive. And it's been kind of the drive lately for me to just invest in that in that way. So why do you think it's important for military spouses to share their stories? Mm. It's there is this it's kind of like on the active duty side, there's a camaraderie that's there. And same thing with the spouse community. Like there's a camaraderie there. Like not everybody can understand what a military spouse goes through other than another military spouse. Yes. Right. And same, same thing with, with the activity. So I, I feel like there's, well, I stumbled across your podcast and I was like, this is amazing because like there is a community there and I've never been a military spouse. And, and when my wife and I got married, it was my last five years in the military. So, and I was on sure duty most of that time. So there, I had one deployment. So we didn't really live like the, the, the true military spouse lifestyle, but we, you know, I've had lots of friends that are there, but there is this, this community and it's so unique as a military spouse right? and hearing the stories. And there's so many amazing stories there. There's so many trial stories there. There's so much that can be passed on. You know, if, if you're a 10, 15 year, 
you know, military spouse and you, you run into someone who's like on their first or second year of being a spouse, you're like, oh, I remember that, right? Like, 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 oh, I could tell you stories. We all have lots of stories. The longer that we're in, the more stories that we have. 100%. And I feel like there's a, I don't want to say disconnect, but I, I feel like there is an almost like, oh, well, you have your own little community you know, you can go to the ombudsman, you know, on, on base, like there's, here's this little package place where you guys can go just kind of, kind of be there and stay there. And it's like, no, like there's, there's just, you know, it's almost like being a stay at home mom, you know, or stay at home parent, like the, like there's so much there that needs to be supported. There's so much there that needs to be encouraged. There's so much there that, that can be shared. And I think sometimes that, that community can get lost. And so part of when I, when I, like I said, when I stumbled across your podcast, I was like, ah, there's actually a place. It hit me like there's a place for it. I, I had just written a book about like why every veteran should write their story. Mm-hmm. And um, same thing here. Like, I, I feel like almost like every spouse should write their story. <laughs> and yet it's so hard because when you are in the middle of it, when you're living through the, you know, is my spouse gone? Are they safe? Am I moving? Am I not moving? Am I trying to get my kids registered? Like, how are we going to find the resources and the doctors and the specialists that we need? It can feel like you're not doing anything meaningful, that your story is not important. And especially in the military community as a spouse, it can feel like you are a supporting character in somebody else's story. So how do we make that leap to say my story matters and and telling my story matters? Mm -hmm. I think when you have an opportunity to share your story with someone else, it encourages them, right? The more you share, the less you feel alone. Mm -hmm. You know, as a spouse, like you can look on base and you can see hundreds of homes and you go, yep. There's hundreds of people that are in this the same category as me, similar situation as, as me. You, you, you know, one might have two kids, one might have twelve kids. You know, but you're there, and there is there's a there's a camaraderie. I think that I don't know how much it exists, but I know that it does exist. And I know from the active duty side, like there's there's such a camaraderie there because we share those. You know, you, you share the front lines of war, you share the behind the scenes. Same thing with with the spouse community. And I think that there is, there needs to be a place where spouses can share and feel like they have a very similar, almost paralleled similarity to that camaraderie that happens in active duty. And it's, you know, we homeschool our kids and I'm sure, and I know there's a lot of military, a lot of military families that homeschool now, especially if you're, if the military member is in a forward kind of role. Um, or bill it like there's, you know, if you're always moving and you never know, like it's just easier. And, yes. but there's, there is a, a space that should be held for the spouses. And I just know like for me, like one avenue of that is telling your story, writing your, writing your book, like sharing it, sharing it, you know, take it to base, but like, Hey, I want to put this in the, in, I don't know, I don't, I don't know if there's a base libraries anymore. Like there should be. <laughs> There is, there is. Awesome. My kids are there all the time. <laughs> you know, like, like there, you know, in the homeschool community, we, you know, we have these park days, you have these, you know, little get together groups and meetup groups and things like that. And, um, and I know that, that that exists in the military too, but just having something else that you can take with you, right? Like having, having a park day or, or, you know, or a meetup event is, is amazing. The kids get together, the mom, you know, the moms typically are, are the ones that can be there and engaging and have, you know, create connection and stuff like that. But, you know, it's when you're at your home, you know, it's, it's the rest of the week when the active duty member is deployed and, and you've got a couple of kids and they're sleeping and it's eight o'clock at night. And you're like, what am I going to do? Like, I feel alone mm-hmm. sometimes. And that's when we go to social media and start posting all about our day. <laughs> yep. And that's when you create your YouTube channels and your <laughs> it's all this. And and uh and 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 that I mean, there's a piece of that that's healthy. That's like when uh, when when you have when you go to social media and you're posting 
on your Instagram, like you are creating a story. It's a visual story Mm -hmm. and there's so much connection there, but there's a lot of opportunity where if we think about it, if we just were able to sit and read and sometimes you're like, I don't have time to do that. But sometimes you want to and you that desire is there. And there's a weird feeling I have like the spouse community is almost like its own chicken soup for the soul kind of community where as you share the stories, it's different than the the hero stories, you know, like the frontline stories, the you know, like the, you know, the machismo, you know, kind of kind of what the military is like. There is so much that a, a spouse does that needs to, in my opinion, needs to be recognized and should be recognized and should be encouraged and given given a, a greater place, if you will, a, a stance in, in, in life than, than I think it's given. For sure. I mean, there's so much that we go through that we learn how to deal with that is outside of our control. And as we navigate these situations, it can feel like we're just along for the ride, but we are learning skills through this. We are learning how to become more adaptable. We are learning how to build those emotional resilient skills that we need. And it's a lot that most people can't relate to or have no idea what it's like to go through the constant uncertainty in life. Yes, agreed. There's and nobody other than somebody who's been through it can can really relate to it. Right. And 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 again, I think there's probably many times where spouses feel alone. Even though you know you're not alone, you f- you, f- you feel alone, um, and having having something to kind of you know go to that says ah okay I'm not alone I can you know and get encouragement from and I'm sure you could write a book a mystery book on on being a spouse you could write a comedic book on being a spouse you could write a leadership book like there's there's all these different stories that you have encountered that other people would read and be like oh my gosh that's that's so me. And I think when we read those stories, you know, that's why I like social media. So it is the way it is. Like we get encouraged, we get, you know, inspired, you know, you put it on your social media story, it can go away. You put it, you kind of put it into a book and it's solidified. And, um, Mm. and it's, and there's, there's a different energy, if you will, that comes with, with having a book of stories in your hand versus a visual story on your phone. Yeah, I want to dive into this idea because going back to what you said earlier about working with veterans and telling their stories and how it was such a healing process for them. And I think a lot of us are familiar with posting about our life on social media or even taking time to sit down and start writing in a journal. Talk about the difference between writing your story in a journal and then actually creating a book of stories of your life? That's a great question. I love that question. Journaling is so, is very cathartic in and of itself, right? There is, and it's extremely personal. You can, it's almost like a diary. You can write it, you can put it away, you can go back to it. You can keep writing. The emotions there are very raw and very real and very, very authentic, and which is super amazing and important, an important piece even me as I journal in the day, like every morning, I, I, almost every morning I journal. And it's, say I have, I have an online journal and I have a written journal and I prefer my written journal because there's, there's just something energetically about getting it, getting out emotions through a pen or a pencil that is, it's like, you know, energy transference. It's, it's now, it's now gone. Um, and I think that's important. Then there's the piece of taking, taking that and putting it inside of a book and, publishing it so now it becomes public but at, at the same time you're sharing a piece of you in a in a more let's say tactful way versus a raw journal but the energy behind that is i want to give back mm-hmm. i feel like especially in the, in the spouse community it's an avenue to where a spouse can feel like they're giving back uh, this might sound bad it's not meant to but there's just this validation i guess of we are just as important as the active duty member. There's all this like, oh, you know, you, you go to war, you know, you're a hero, you know, there's amazingness. And, and yes, absolutely. But 
you know, the old saying, like, behind every good man, there's a good woman, right? Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, there's a wife pushing him or something. Like, you know, there's that same concept, like, the spouse is the backbone of the family, you know, and especially in the military, it, here are you, the spouse at home with the kids doing all the day-to-day -day stuff that's not pretty, but is required. And the mundane can get pushed away as being monotonous. What you're creating is you, you're creating a family, you're creating a community, you're creating a place where life happens. And when you take that from a journal and you put that into a story and you give it to somebody else, then there's others that they can find comfort in it. There's, there's a legacy there piece there that you're presenting to, to the world. And it is probably just as cathartic for a military spouse to tell their story as it is for an active duty guy that to, to tell their story. It's they're, they're all important. And it's probably just as healing for a spouse to, to tell it and to share it. To me, those stories are almost more important than, than the war stories, you know, because because there is a war there. It's just a different kind of war. Yeah, I think one of the interesting things is that when we have this idea of getting something out in a journal format, and it, it is cathartic to get those thoughts, those feelings down on paper. And oftentimes we aren't even consciously aware that we have those thoughts or those feelings and it just comes out of us. But what you're really getting at is this meaning making. What do we do with that information? And it's not just for us. It's really having that sense of, I lived a meaningful life. I found a sense of purpose, which is what this podcast is all about, how we find purpose as military spouses. And really having that sense of purpose means using what you have, using your skills, your knowledge, your story in a way that helps other people. And it's through using your life and your story that truly allows you to feel that sense of purpose, which leads us to a fulfilling life. How we spend our days is how we spend our life. And we think so often it's about this big, grand thing that happened. But it's really about making today matter and then using our lives to positively influence and impact those around us. Yes. I'm gonna call I'm gonna call you right now. You just said you just said um the phrase of making today matter, like I don't remember how many how many episodes you have, but um, but here's a good here's a here's a good call out for you is is you can write a book called Making Today Matter where you take your podcasts and you put it in this, your podcast guests that you've had and you can put those into stories and present it out as you know as something something that came to my mind right now. I love it. <laughs> I am all about new ideas, so thank you for that one. <laughs> and I know a good ghostwriter if you want. <laughs> Awesome. So let's quickly talk about if we want to write our story. Talk to us about how we begin. Mm, I think it begins, it can begin as easily as, as journaling, you know, whether, whether you're writing it down, brainstorming, it's like if, if I, you know, even asking yourself, if I were to write a book about my life, what are the most important things in my life? You know, and you're probably going to say, you know, your kids or your, you know, your, your family, um, events, you know, experiences, those kind of things. And then really it's, it's just kind of writing, writing it down, whether you, whether you do it pen, pen or pencil or whether you do it, you know, digitally getting the information out of your head with some kind of structured, you know, template that says, okay, this is kind of what I, what I have going on as you're thinking about it from a, from a, from a story or a book, a book premise. Those are really good ways to just to just say, ah, what is it? And like if it almost like if, if somebody were to come to me and say, I want you to teach another military spouse who's on day one how to survive, because you know that it's it's going to feel at some point like you can't survive this. 
you know, this is just so overwhelming. You know, what would you, you know, the old, like, what would you say to your 20 year old self? Right. <laughs> you know, and kind of, kind of said like, what would, what would you, what would you say to, to a, a day one military spouse that walks in and you know, she's like, I just got married and my husband's gone for seven months. Like, <laughs> like I think seven months, <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> you know, like what, you know, and so just kind of framing, framing thoughts around that concept of if I were to say something, what would I say? You know, what, what are the, what are the stories that I've been through that can encourage? What are the stories that I've been through that could entertain? You know, what are the, what are the stories that I've been through that are just excruciatingly painful, but coming out of the other side, you know, I was like, wow, I didn't think I could get through that, but I did, you know, and then you experience it again, you know, especially because there's the, you know, there's the cycles, the military always has the cycles, right? And there's, so, so if you spend 20 years in, you're going to have the workups, you're going to have the, the short deployments, you're going to have the long deployments. And so it never gets easier. But the, the one thing, the one thing I noticed was, and, and I'm sure probably almost every single, every single couple does this to some degree is at least initially is right before I would deploy um, or even if I would go out for a couple of weeks, there's, there's just this natural argument that happens, right? Cause it's, cause you know, you're getting, you're getting ready and, and because it's so much easier to not think about missing someone when you're mad at them <laughs> versus if you're not mad at them, there's like this natural, like, okay, if I get, you know, subconscious, if I get mm -hmm. mad, I don't have to, I don't have to, to, to think about the fact that they're going to be gone. And then once they're gone, I can't do anything about it. So I might as well just accept it, you know? And, and, uh, but, but even, even that, like, that's a story. Like, how do you work through the separation process that, that's, you know, agreed upon? And then, you know, and so, so I think the more that, that spouses and even active duty members too, like, like, I think, I think there's a lot of active duty guys that just don't understand what you, you know, what the spouse goes through when they're deployed. Like, mm -hmm. I, I mean, they do, but they don't. Right. And it's like, like, I can't, I could never tell you what it's like to be on the front lines of, of war, you know, really like I can talk about it, you know, and I'm like, Oh, I, and you might be like, yeah, I can kind of understand that. Just, just like I could, you can never really tell me what it's like to experience having to raise three kids when they're all sick and I'm gone and you can't, connect with me. You can't call me. You can't, you know, it's like, I'm on my own, you know? And so I could be like, oh, I bet that's tough. You know, just like, you know, and, and it's not, it's not that one is more important than the other. They each have equal importance. And, and, and I think that's a great place to start is understanding that your job as a military spouse is as equally important, if not more than, than the act of duty members role and job for sure and they're each unique they're each important and where we struggle is when we start to compare ourselves and we say well what i went through is harder than what you went through rather than saying okay how can we come together as a team how can we support each other and how can we encourage each other to both feel like we have a sense of purpose and that we can pursue our goals and dreams together as a couple. I remember when, when we were, when my wife and I were first married, we got pregnant right away. And um, I think we were married five months. She got pregnant. So she was at this baby and me class at, on, on base. And they were talking about the, you know, the leave and earning statements, you know, that, that we have. And uh, back in the day, we used to get them, these full pages of paper with, you know, with, with everything on it. And our, I don't know what they do today, but like it used to have our vacation time and how much we got for per diem and, and our BAH and, and all that, all that stuff. And, and my wife and I just like, she knew that the money came in. She knew how much she had to spend 
and you know we both did the bank account so she saw it come in and and but but we never really like I never like sat down with her and said this is what my pay stub looks like and here's everything on it and because it's you know it's, it's a pay stub right. right it was like and so somebody was talking about that and, and you know obviously they called it the LES and she raises her hand she's like she's like what's an LES she she said she came home and told me the story she said there was this lady that turned around that had like three four inch nails you know fake nails and and turned around and looked at her like honey if you don't know what an les is your man is cheating on you he's hiding money from you he's doing and, and she was like well that's what she wanted to hear at the time yeah 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 she's like ah uh, she goes so are you <laughs> like it was like you know, I was like, okay, let me bring it out and show you what what it is, and and it was, you know, like so. There's like those those entertaining stories of like nowhere else are you going to get that. Nobody comes home from a, from a you know no corporate job has has a you know a spouse class you know or 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 a, a new babe new mama you know kind of class to go through and learn about how that is, how that is is like you're just expected to figure it out you know and so. And so it's just those like like stories like that are just funny to me, you know, and, mm-hmm. and like wow, like it's just like this is my fourth military marriage. It's like, well, there's an issue there. <laughs> just maybe. <laughs> just All maybe. right. So let's talk about making this super practical. So if we're talking about there is value in writing your story and making it something that you can share with others. But as military spouses, who are holding down the home front, who are trying to manage all the things. Sometimes we don't even have time for self-care. So how do we start to actually take out time, to carve out time to begin writing our stories? Mm. Are you a pretty scheduled person? Me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So so if you're a scheduled person, then then just carve out to schedule it. You know, like, and it doesn't have to be, you know, it could be 15 minutes. It could be a half hour. You know, it could be, you know, creating a goal that says, I'm going to write a page a day or I'm going to, you know, and, and that's all. I'm going to write a page a day for six months, you know, or X amount of time, you know, and then, and then start, you know, throwing it together as, as a book, if you want, if you're, if you're not a scheduled person, and and you just kind of you know that's you just have you have to be mindful of 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 taking that time to say okay when I have time I'm going to I, I think the, the old cliche of the journey a, a journey of a hundred miles starts with one step right like it's it's the same kind of concept but like just just starting like grabbing a journal and saying you know my book this is my that's just like just running like this is my book and then and then you just start writing thoughts and ideas and notes in there. And what will happen is if it's supposed to happen, then you will be drawn to want to write more. And I, I think that's, that's the, the best stories are the organic ones, right? The, the best, the best, the best food is organic food, right? The, the best, you know, the the most fun you have with another person is when it's organic and it's not forced, right? Like it's so that, that same concept I, I take into writing, like the, the best writing comes organically and it comes naturally. And once you start writing, even if it's five minutes a day, like you, there's something that happens and you're like, ah, I, I, I want this. And so you'll, you'll create time for it. Um, you'll create, space for it and you'd be like i really want to do this you know i mean that's essentially how entrepreneurship got started really is like i want to do this and you know spend up more and spending more time and more time and and you probably thought about your podcast for a while and then all of a sudden you're like bam now i'm talking to people now i have a podcast <laughs> it's like and and uh you probably didn't wake up i could be wrong you probably didn't wake up one morning and go, i want to have a podcast it's going to be this long it's going to have this amount of people like Although as a scheduled person, you may have. <laughs> no, it was that I, I want to start a podcast and I'm about to PCS to the other side of the world and we will get this launched someday. <laughs> That's awesome. 
and and eventually it made it happen. But it it's those little bite sized pieces. It's the breaking it down into what is possible in this season. Is it five minutes a day? Is it 15, 30 minutes a day? Is it once a week? And what is possible today? And then the second thing that you said is just do it to start to do it messy. When I launched the podcast, I had no experience hosting a podcast. It was something I had never done before. And it really just takes the willingness to say, I'm going to try it, even if I've never done it before. And even if I don't do it great, yeah. doing something is yep. better than nothing. And and and, and that is, that's, that's so true. And and you, you will, you'll get to a point where if it's something that's, that is on your heart and in your mind to get out, you will find time to do it. It's like whatever, whatever we want to prioritize ends up being what we prioritize. And even amidst like feeling like you don't have time as, as that spouse, like we, we all know that there are times in the day to do it. It's just how, you know, what, what becomes important and how do we, how do we navigate that? And, you know, when you're in the throes of, you know, two kids under three, you know, for example, you know, or three kids, you know, or even, even one, like, honestly, let's, let's just, you know, you have a kid under three at home, like that is your time and your attention. Um, and so something else is in that, in that time is you, most of us have a phone, you know, pretty much all of us have phones, right? And, and they're all smartphones nowadays. So we all have video rec- we all are not necessarily video, but we all have recording devices on there. So I remember when, when we had our seventh, um, my job was, was to take her and to walk her in the afternoons to put her down for a nap. So every afternoon and every evening I put her to bed. Um, but I had to have her on the, you know, I had her in the, in the, in the carrier and I would walk around with her. And the first couple of times I'd walk around and like, this is a waste of time. Like, like I've got so many things to do and here I am. I have to like walk around with this baby. <laughs> it's like, like, and you love it. You're like, this is amazing. And it's like the first few times you're like, that's all you're thinking about is, Oh, I'm just walking around. And I would literally walk around for about 20 minutes. And, and, and I started to do, I started to do my journaling while I was walking around and I started just recording it in there. And I was like, ah, like, so I do have time. I, you know, it, there is, there is healthy multitasking, you know, in, in, in that sense. And I think, I think figuring out how that ebb and flow is, 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 is different for every person in their, in their circumstance. But that's just a way that, that I was like, ah, I can, I can almost relate to, to that. You know, I, I've been home for the last couple of kids, but I definitely was not home for the, you know, for the first three. And, um, and, and yeah, like being home, like, wow, like there's a lot that goes into being a stay at home parent that I never thought like my, my first exposure to it was walking in early one day to, I think we had two kids and they had both just gone down for a nap, like, like for the first time ever. I think our youngest was like six months. Our oldest was two. Um, and, and my wife was pregnant with our third and I came home early and I walk in and Oprah's on and she has the half gallon of ice cream and the only clean spoon that we had at the time, which was a serving spoon. And so so I walk into her digging into, um, with a huge serving spoon of ice cream with Oprah on the TV. I'm like, and this is what you do all day. And she was like, no, I'm like, the house is a mess. This, and, but it was, that was the beginning of like, ah, there's, there is so much that, that goes on in a day and, and how do you find the time? Um, and, and I think part of that is, is, is each couple's, you know, how their dynamic of how they work together, you know, but, but it's, I think one of the things is it's okay to just be in whatever place you're at. And, and I think that having that mindset almost helps go, ah, cause, cause I'm sure there's not a day that goes by that, that a spouse was like, I could write about that. 
like, you know, like, like, like there's a story there. There's a, there's an anecdote there. There's something that you think about subconsciously. You're like, that's going to come in handy in 10 years. <laughs> like, and so, and, and so having the mindset of just being present in whatever, whatever situation that you're in almost gives your mind the opportunity to think bigger. Um, not bigger than like they're as in you have to think bigger, but just like, like your, your mind begins to go, Oh, I see how this fits into my, the bigger picture of life. I see how, you know, if, if I were to, to write this down, I could help someone else with it, you know, because you know that there's a community there, you know, that there's, there's others that are in your same season and, and, and that season isn't going to last. For sure. So as we are wrapping up today, let everybody know, like if they are having the story, if this is on their heart and they would love to connect with you, find out more about ghostwriting, ask you some questions, um, tell us how to do that. My Instagram account is, it's just, it's Stephen Leapley official. Stephen underscore Leapley underscore official. And probably that's probably the easiest easiest way to, to get a hold of me. I have a website, which is leaplyenterprises.com. But Instagram, I, I would say, would probably be the, the easiest. And if anybody's interested in it, if you guys connect, if, if any, any listeners connect with me via Instagram and just send me a DM and just put um, spouse as in the DM, I have an I have an ebook I wrote called Twenty One Questions You Should um, Twenty One Questions to Ask a Ghostwriter Before You Hire One. Um, I will send that ebook out to to anybody and and to just helps it it really like helps walk through. It's more than just asking a ghost you know somebody else to help write with you. It it's really kind of um, walks you through like uh, is this something I actually want to do um, and. And the caveat, the caveat for that book is it all, it has my answers in it. So mm -hmm. here's the 21 questions you should ask. Oh, by the way, also, if you were to ask me these questions, here are my answers. Um, so that's, that's something that I, I would love to just give out to, to people. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show today and for talking to us about why it matters that we write our stories and how we can get started. I'm, I'm honored and humbled. Thank you. At the end of the day, what I want you to know is that you matter. Your story matters. Regardless of the way your life looks today, whether you are in the season of hard with lots of littles at home and it feels like you never have a moment to yourself, or whether your kids are off on their own and you're feeling a little lost because you've spent the last 20 years taking care of them. Wherever you find yourself today and whatever your day-to-day -day rhythm looks like, know that you matter, that your story matters, and when you choose to share your story, number one, it helps you process your own emotions and feelings about your journey. Number two, it helps others as they are navigating their own journey. And number three, it leaves a legacy. To live a meaningful life, make the most of what you have today by choosing to believe that you matter, that your story matters, and that it deserves to be shared. Again, if you would like help tapping into your potential, your fullness, understanding who you are uniquely created to be and how you can live into that, then I would love to work with you. Just go to millspousemastermind.com and click on the work with me link or click the link in the show notes. Next week, we are starting a new series about PCSing and a lot of helpful nuggets to think about as we move into what is a big PCS season for a lot of people. Until then, may you live filled, fueled, and full of joy. Hey friend, before you go, 
the Mill Spouse Mastermind Community is here to help you thrive as a military spouse, figure out what lights your heart on fire, and equip you to create a life of impact. You can have an incredible impact simply by heading over to iTunes to subscribe and leave a review. And if today's episode was meaningful to you, I know it will be for others too. Spread the word by taking a screenshot of this episode and share it to your stories so we can continue to reach more people, change more lives, and shift the way that military spouses look at life. Because we are better together, and together we can change the world. Let's do it.